guys, welcome to the recap of the third place match between Hans Smoke Neiman and Hikaru Nakamura. Those players are always going at each other on social media and now they had to settle it on the chessboard. And without further ado, let's start walking through the games. So, and again, you know, Hikaru was a clear favorite. Hans lost by a big margin to Magnus. And of course, you know, yeah, some people could say, okay, Hans probably got a chance against old Hikaru, but in reality, I mean, the king of speed chess is showing why he is named like this. So, the, the first game I'm, I'm showing you right now is from 5 plus 1 portion. Just, you know, show you some of the games that happened that day. Takes, takes, knight e5, and now queen b7. So Hans was pondering a lot throughout the match. Hikaru wasn't playing on his best level, of course. And, I mean, the way that final match turned out, which I'll analyze to, in tomorrow's video, uh, we don't know what could have happened if Hikaru played against Magnus. So bishop e4, bishop e4, bishop e4, rook d7, queen has to go back. And the problem is that after rook d4, both bishops are under attack, and black are not able to secure both of them and Hans resigned. The next game again is for, from 5 plus 1 portion, knight of 3 and as you can see at this point the score was 4 out of 6 to Hikaru and 1 out of 6, actually yeah 2 out of 6 to Hans. Knight of 6, c4, e6, b3 and again. So what Hikaru mentioned in after the match interview that Levy's opponents in the norm tournament actually knew how to play against those setups basically b3, e3, c4 better than uh, Hans did so castle, g3, double hand ghetto again same structure, queen of 2 it even looks like we're watching the same game rook c1, rook d1, takes takes, bishop a3, queen a3 and now bishop h3 pin in this knight d4, rook d8, queen c2 Rook e7, knight e2, so kind of boring stuff, you know, trying to get e5 square under control before, not letting to go to c5, and slowly Hikaru was taking positional advantage. c5 square is very good for the knight, e5 square obviously is good as well. Knight g5, bishop g2, rook c7, queen c5, trying to trade, queen b6, uh, 3 knight g5, knight f4, knight d7, takes, takes, queen c5, takes, rook c5 f5, e4, takes, takes, and now king starts walking to e3 and take on e4. Back, rook d8, d5, you know, pawn break, and now king walks to g4 and open c file under control of Hikaru, open e file under control, and those rooks look very stupid, and also huge weakness on d5. Bishop e4, rook c7, rook d7, rook c6. And slowly Hikaru was out playing, taking all the pawns, and after rook e4, a nice move actually. Because rook c7, rook e4, the idea is after he takes e4, knight e6 wins. And if you say, oh, but rook c4 and take the rook, there is a simple king d5, and this rook is protected, this pawn is protected, and white wins the game. The next game, the next two games I'm about to show you are both from bullet portion of this match, the final portion. Hikaru was setting puzzle rush records, I mean in between the breaks, to 6 and once again it looks like Hikaru played those setups every single match, every single game in this match, because the point is just play whatever works and for Hikaru this setup worked well, you know Hans tried different setups as well, you know he played d5 e6 bishop d6, he now can get us like this as well, but at this point look at the score. 19 and a half and 7 and a half to Hans. I mean, Hikaru just destroyed Hans, not letting him take any chances. By the end of the match, yeah, Hans started playing better. He had some more chances coming his way. Takes takes, g4, c5, trying to basically do something, c6. So the idea of c6 is bishop c6, bishop e1, and Hikaru was like, I'll take on c7. But that didn't happen, bishop c8, bishop e1, queen h6, hand straight to attack, bishop f6, rook b3, some nonsense is happening here, I know. 
Taking some space, queen a1, bishop f2, very boring stuff going on here, queen b2, b5, rook c3, rook c2, and slowly here, I mean great e4 break, because after takes, there is bishop e4, and if knight e4, there is knight e6, knight f2, takes, queen f6, and because basically if king is 7 just knight g5, rook g5, and this is a check. So of course, Kant goes this way, knight d3, queen g6, e5, and everything is just slowly collapsing. King j, bishop e8, and this bishop is not going anywhere, this rook is not going anywhere. Look how bad this bishop is. It's locked this pawn, just locks the bishop, there is no counterplay, Hans resigned. And the last game I'm about to show you, again, just great example, but now Hikaru played d4, no more e3 b3 nonsense because at this point he was already winning he just needed to you know get the time run out and that's it rook c1 rook c3 queen d2 trying to take basically c5 under control rook b1 attacking b7 rook b5 queen a4 rook b4 queen c6 rook b3 knight c4 queen a2 b5 knight h4 Again, very boring stuff, and here, brilliant knight g6, king g6, g4, taking on f5, and there are more and more problems, rook g1, and here, Hans reside. The final score of this match is... What you can, will see on the screen, 21 to Hikaru, and 9 to Hans Smoke Niemann. And... In tomorrow's video, I mean, as you can see, Hikaru just demolished Hans. Hans just posted some tweets. I, I won't edit them. You can just go and check what he tweeted after the match. He just wanted to say that he's basically grateful to have this experience. He played against two past chess players on the planet. You know, of course, he lost, but he, he promised he'll be back. So, this match is done. Tomorrow, I'll analyze. The match between Magnus Carlsen and Alireza Firuja. Of course, you know the result, but just, you know, I'll try to maybe dive you more deeper into this match and why this happened. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.